Alhamdulillah, 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 من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد الله لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى هو الذي ارسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صدق الله العظيم I have recited one ayah from Surah An-Nisa which calls the people to the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I recited one of the very famous ayahs in the Quran that is هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لَيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ مشركون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He has sent His Messenger Wadin in Haq and he has given him a deen of justice or deen in Haq. So what is the purpose of sending these two things? One is Rasul which he sent in the form of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was his last prophet or messenger. And then he gave him deen in Haq, deen of justice. That it should be dominant on all the systems of the world. Walau karihal mushrikun, this is a very revealing thing that the mushrikun will never tolerate this. Mushrikun will oppose very strongly this plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say in this ayah. This ayah has been repeated three times in the, in Quran. Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah Al-Fatha, and Surah Al-Saf, uh, three times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give the idea. Sometimes there are misconceptions with the Muslims also. Uh, please uh, remove this misconception that Islam is a religion, madhab. Arabic people know that Islam is not a religion. There are mazhabs inside Islam, for example, mazhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, mazhab of Imam Shafi, mazhab of Imam Ibn Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, mazhab of Imam Malik. So these are the mazahib inside the Islam. So Islam itself is not a religion. There is a trick uh, in that. If it is a religion, it can sustain under the umbrella of any system. As for example, we are sustaining in American system. American system is dominant. We are sort of surviving under the umbrella of the kufr. So the, this system is the kufr and we tolerating this. Sometimes we also praise that. It is very strange that some of the imams, they say this is a wonderful system. Why they say wonderful system? They, they, it allows them to pray. That's why they say that this is a wonderful system. And majorly because there are better environmental conditions, better electricity, amenities, hot water, they never go and you can enjoy all the time, so that's why they say this is a wonderful system. Otherwise, this is actually a slavery of the Muslims and sustained under the system of the kufr. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that Islam is not a mazhab, it is a deen. Deen means system, it, it, it requires this dominance. Who will do that? The first time Rasulullah did that, this ayah which is it is not attached with any of the uh, messengers. Not attached with Musa Islam, not related to Isa Islam, not related to Sulaiman Islam or Nuh Islam, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has postponed this to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
he would be the first person for the first time in the history of the mankind he will establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the surface of the earth, will run it and show it to the people that this is the deen of justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people will live in that. People will not be living under the kings, uh, people will not be living under the other systems, they will live under the system of Islam, it is a system of justice. This is actually the biggest achievement which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam got. People never mentioned that. That what was his biggest achievement? There were other Rasul, but for the first time he was successful. That's why there are many of the scholars. I don't say the scholar. Those are the authors, Western authors. They they are very much. Uh, there is against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They do character assassination of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They spread lies against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They uh, spread uh, the malicious their statements against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is our responsibility that we take care of that. If somebody is writing that, we should write down that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the greatest person on the surface of the earth. But for me and for which is the climax of the Quran is that deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was established by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why there is a misconception. The book which, was, which is written by Michael Hart, I have mentioned a number of times. Michael Hart was the professor over here, I think in the University of Incarnate Word or somewhere downtown in, in uh, San Antonio. And he wrote the book, The Hundred. And he said that the first person who to impress the history of the history of mankind and who was successful equally on the political level and the religious level was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not a Muslim, but he is seeing that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was equally successful on the secular level or political level. He was equally successful on the religious level. He was also a messenger, but he was not only the messenger that sitting and uh, making was like me, that he was there to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he got the misconception that he was equally successful at the political level, secular level. Why? Previous messengers and the Ambiya, this was not their duty to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it was not possible at that time. The society was not evolutionized at that stage that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should establish his deen on the surface of the earth. It was only the share of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he fulfilled, he established the deen. And that's why he said that now that this Jazirat al-Arab is now clean of any of the shirk. Only Tawheed will survive over there. I heard some of the scholars these days, two, two days back, that somebody was saying that why the non-Muslims are not allowed to go to Mecca and Medina Haraman. So he said, oh, you know, they are allowed to go over there. They can watch how the people do Hajj. I was surprised, but suddenly, last night, I saw one ayah in the Quran. Innal mushrikeen najasun, that mushrikeens are najas. La yaqrabu masjid al harama baad amihim haza. So they should not go near masjid al haram after this year. This was the announcement in the Quran which Rasulullah sallallahu established through Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu has already gone for hajj and he was the Amir of hajj. And Rasulullah, this ayah was revealed Surah the Tawbah that, that Mushrikun cannot go near Masjid al Haram after this year. This is in Surah Tawbah. Please read that. And then Rasulullah sent Hazrat Ali to Abu Bakr Siddiq that go there, announce that after this year, Mushrikun would not be allowed to attend the Hajj. They were doing Hajj before that. Hajj is not different of what the people were doing before. Rasulullah did not do any addition in the Hajj. It was the same Hajj which Prophet Ibrahim was doing, other prophets, other people were doing. Only difference was they, they have put some of the statues, the mushrikun were also doing the Hajj. 
The first thing it is very strange that when Ali who went to Abu Bakr Siddiq who, please check what is that. He was asking Amirun Aw Mamurun, you, you have come as the leader or just to give me an information, Mamur, yes. I would be, he made me Amir of the Hajj and now he has sent you, so now you, the Amir is changed. He said, no, 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 I have just come here to announce the announcement which is revealed to Rasulullah that after this year, no mushrik will be allowed to be present in Haraman Sharif hand. No mushrik can do that. But modern Muslims, they are very generous. They say that, no, it is no problem. They can watch the Hajj. It is in the Quran that was established by Rasulullah There is a lesson in that. These days, most of the Muslims, they spend their whole life. They have no Amir to account for. Rasulullah was the perpetual Amir, absolute Amir. Nobody could have claimed Amara in presence of him. After that, the biggest problem was who would be the Khalifa, who would be the Amir. These days, Muslims, nobody has the Amir. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about Jama'ah. Nobody cares about Dawah. All these things have disappeared from the life of the Muslims. Look here, Abu Bakr Siddiq who was asking Hazrat Ali, Amirun aw Mamurun. So this was one lesson which I suddenly it came to my mind, I told you that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleared the uh, Jaziratul Arab from the shirk, Tawheed was established, and Rasulullah sallallahu was at least proud in one thing. He was very proud that after this day, on this land, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be worshipped. No any statue, no other deity would be worshipped. He was proud of that. When Rasulullah left, he, he, you, I read the history that Rasulullah was not very happy with the Ummah. You know what happened at the last moment, uh, there is the Sahaba Kram, they were great people, but they started arguing in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi bring the people and Umar radiallahu ta'ala is saying no we have the Quran we don't bring them so Shia people they they have said that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to write down that Ali radiallahu ta'ala would be Khalifa after me this he wanted to say on that paper uh, nobody knows because this is the ghaib no, but Shia people they claim that and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when a reformer you say the Mujaddid, when he leaves this world, he is never satisfied. He said, you came to me that you are sending Usama ibn Zayd for this, the leader of this army. There should be some people from Quraysh who should be leading this army. Usama ibn Zayd is the son of a slave, but you, you, uh, you are sending him as the general of the army. This is objectionable. Rasulullah sallallahu got too much angry that the whole life he has spent. You have learned this, that Quraysh would be the leader of this uh, army and Usama ibn Zayd would be not uh, leader of this army. Rasulullah sallallahu his last moment was that all the people are equal. Slave is equal to his master, woman is equal to men, and Quraysh is equal to non-Quraysh. White is equal to black, black is equal to white. This was his last lesson. And some of the people are after that claiming that on leadership would be with this clan or with this clan. And Rasulullah has indicated that. So that's why Rasulullah was not very happy with the Muslims, but he did a great job. He established the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the take home lesson. Now what is in the future? Rasulullah said that a day will come, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again enter in every house. If whether this is made of the bricks, whether this is made of uh, there is mud, whether this is made of wood, every house, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter. If we are not ready to work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe off all these peoples who are heedless to his deen. Look at what happened to the Jews. They say six million Jews were killed by Hitler. Nobody came to their help. Even U.S. didn't. They wrote letters that come and uh, drop some bombs on, on Hitler so that he should stop killing the Jews. Nobody came. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sings when my Rasul came and he gave you the dawa, Quran, do you rejected that. Same situation is with the Muslims now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that my Quran is there, but you never read it, you never tried to understand if a person is educated person and he is only reading the Quran and is not trying to understand it. Why? Because if I understand, then I have to follow it. The Quran says that don't tell lies, but I have to tell lies. So I should not understand the Quran. Just read it in Arabic and you will get swab. And you are also getting azab. If you are telling lies, the Quran says that on the people who tell lies, there is a lana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't, we don't understand. And this is not my impression. You look at the countries and the countries are wiped off the, of the surface of the earth. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about these kind of Muslims who, who don't care about his Quran. So this is the same situation with the Jews God. I read books, I was reading the Holocaust books and there were nightmares and those were scary, so scary books. If you go to Sanitarium Library, if you read that book, the Holocaust, you will get definitely the uh, nightmares during the night time and sweating because it was so scary killing which the um, Hitler was doing. Same situation will help to the people that those were also Muslims, Jews are Muslims. And now it is the turn of the Muslim that they are so heedless. My personal experience is that I, I arrange dars in the masjid, I send message to 200, 250 people, 250 people. I only read the Quran, I follow it word, word by word. There is no masjid in the San Antonio follows Quran word by word. If it is saying this is haram, you have to stop there, otherwise you will be nothing. So I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he save us any of the bad consequences and he give us hadaya that we pay the same attention to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we pay attention to the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry and other books and we try to understand it. If one word is not understandable, go to the teacher. Please tell me what is the meaning of this word, where this is found. That attention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book need a kulu kulu